Welcome back to Respect the Dead. I'm Kaylin Conrad. I'm Hoots. And today we're doing an episode. It's exciting, right? Ooh. Something fresh and new. I love those. <laughs> we probably have like an intro or something that'll come in like right about now. Sweaty. We have a tagline. Oh, oh we the don't. <laughs> It's a podcast and we don't. We did it. (laughs) Welcome back to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we don't. Sweaty. It's no surprise that everybody celebrated your demise. And now worms are eating your eyes. So don't you worry your rotten head as you sleep in your sodden bed. It's been so long, like two weeks or something. That's like three years in high people time. Oh, no, like literally. (laughs) I have seen universes burn. (laughs) Everyone I know has died. (laughs) I love that high people are like living out their lives in dog years. (laughs) (sighs) Okay, so let's jump into this little one. Mm -hmm. So we're in Italy, which we love. I love I'm Italy. like, I'm super Italian for a pasta. I'm super Italian for a sunflower, for, for wine. Mm. Wa- for, mm, yes. For men with, with uh, lots of chest hair. Oh, and like a gold <sighs> chain. Oof. Oh, nasty. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Italian for a nasty a, man. A nasty chest hair. I love a gold chain ripping the hairs out of his chest. <laughs> oh yeah, with like there's like a bunch of hair, like scraggly hairs stuck in the links. <laughs> it's so so it is a statement necklace, but it didn't start that way. <laughs> he lets me borrow it sometimes. <laughs> like it smells like him. Brush it out. It, brushing it out. Okay. Anyway, so we're in Italy. The year is 1571, which is like a thousand years ago. So long ago. And a dude named Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio. Oh my God, I've heard of him. Which is a gorgeous name. He's just slithered out of his mom's womb. um, And his, the area that he lives is like embroiled in a war. It's like the Ottomans versus the Christians. Things are like, there's like a huge battle going on. Things are not great. And it's like also 1571. So everybody's like filled with disease. Everybody's super diseased. And there's like no YouTube. No. No Netflix. Not even like a steam powered YouTube. Yeah, no. I, I don't even know if they had books. So we're like bored when we're not suffering. Yeah. Like bored uh, is like bored is like the best you can hope for. Imagine being bored and suffering. <laughs> like that's that's a mental feat. Well, I think it would just be the new norm. Mm, yeah, like the way everything starts to hurt the older you get. Yeah. Like your body just <laughs> always has like a constant ache. I'm like maybe I don't need to imagine being bored and suffering. No, wait, I do. <laughs> you, I'm I'm usually um, so high that I'm never actually bored. So his Early family deets are a little bit sketch, but his pops, Fermo Marisi, was the go-to steward and architect for the Marquis of Caravaggio. When he was six, the bubonic plague, like, they had a little party Ew. at the house, and it wiped out, like, most of his family, including his That's dad. That's my least favorite plague. I know. It's so gross. Like, favorite, it- though? Locusts. <gasps> yeah, frogs for me. Oh, like that's oh, so oh, cute. That's tough. Locusts are annoying. Yeah, like, locusts are annoying. Frogs are adorable. And frogs would eat the locusts. Like if you had frogs everywhere, yeah. there would be no mosquitoes fucking with you. You're right. Frogs yeah. is the best. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Bubonic plague, however, is not. <laughs> no, is not even in a top three. 
Biographer Andrew Graham Dixon wrote in Caravaggio, A Life Sacred and Profane, that he was practically hardwired to break the rules. He can't resist it. The moment he gets a a nod from authority. Yeah, but he's like one of those petulant ones (laughs) who's like, (laughs) who's like, oh, you like what I'm doing? Well, I guess I'm going to do something else then. Like, it was just like, (laughs) it was so petty. Quote. He's practically hardwired to break the rules. It's like he can't resist it. The moment he gets a nod from authority, a thumbs up from the Pope, a welcome from the Knights of Malta, he's compelled to mess things up. It's his fatal flaw. So like he would try and be like a little rebel. And then people were like, oh, my God, great job. And he was like, no, no, you can't. You can't talk to me like that. I'm not your son. You're not my dad, dad, dad. Poor little. I'm a bad, bad boy. (laughs) I love like getting like rebelling and getting a little tattoo and then your mom is like, oh, honey, that's really cute. It's really pretty. And being like, no, well, now I'm going to go get it lasered (laughs) off. (laughs) I'm going to get a bigger, scarier, uglier one of your nasty face. How about that? She's like, oh, my God, that's so sweet. (laughs) Getting getting, (laughs) Getting an entire back piece of your mom. (laughs) (laughs) To piss her off. (laughs) At the age of 11, Caravaggio made his way to Milan, where he kicked off his artistic journey under the wing of painter Simone Pirozano. By his late teens, probably around 1588, they didn't, they couldn't like go back and check his like Facebook posts to see right. like for sure. Because he deleted his account. Yeah. <laughs> he did not like to <laughs> switch to Meta. <laughs> <laughs> so he's poor as shit and he's like, I'm going to try my luck in Rome. There, in a bid to keep the hunger pangs at bay, he took on gigs assisting fellow painters, many of whom didn't quite match up to his skill level. Like, he's been painting. That's the only thing he does. That's the only thing he's good at. Um, And he's, like, good. Like, scary, but good. I'll send you some in a second. So he's an artist, and he acts like one. He doesn't want a real job. He does not want to uh-huh. work. Like, <laughs> and relatable. He's like, yeah. no, I just want to make my like silly us. little content. <laughs> yeah. So he like hops from one job to another, but like he can't fuck with authority. So right. he's constantly being like told to get the fuck out because he's like, no, I can't he's a come little into bit work of a for the next two weeks. I'm painting. <laughs> yeah. Around 1595, he decides to take the solo route and stop like helping out other painters and began peddling his paintings through a dealer. And immediately, like, people were like, oh, 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 oh this God, is you're good. good. Yeah, who the fuck is oh. this? <laughs> oh! <laughs> and he caught the eye of Cardinal Francesco Del Monte. Impressed by his work, the Cardinal not only became a fan, but also hooked him up with, like, a cushy setup. A place to crash, meals, and a steady income. A, a, an original patron of the arts yeah yeah these days it's even easier to become a patron you just go to patreon.com mm-hmm. slash respect the dead and sign up to support all that we do and with that at our topmost tier you can pay our rent and all of our food so that we can make art yeah you're you. welcome <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do that just for you that's the francesco tier <laughs> that's francesco's promise Caravaggio was known to work super quickly. Like he would start a painting and finish it in like two weeks. But his paintings are fucking masterpieces. Yeah. And by the time he had come under the influence of Del Monte, he already had like 40 gorgeous paintings to his name. Now I'm going to send you some and you tell me if you notice a little bit of a disturbing trend. (laughs) A theme... He likes a certain type of boy. Mm, young. One might say maybe not necessarily post pubes. Um, definitely mid pubes. <laughs> I mean, the first one you sent me is is experiencing twink death. Like that is a hard looking twink. So one of the things that he does is he tr- he makes everyone look a little bit like him. <laughs> I love that. I love I stand a narcissistic queen. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a photo of him. A photo. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> a photo <laughs> of a portrait of him. Because they did take a photo of it. That's how they got it onto the computer. Not me like 
pulling up his name in the first the first result being molester question mark (laughs) oh no spoilers don't tell me (laughs) so if you look at this photo you'll see that their eyebrows are almost like identical to his that deep set eyes deep set eyes yeah the same shape like the round lips yeah they're like they're plump but they're narrow so it's very it's very kissy lips so if you're listening if you're listening audio only His work featured, like, it was sort of like cherubs, Mm -hmm. but without the, um, but like a hard cherub, like a cherub who's seen some shit, (laughs) like maybe a cherub that like fell out of heaven and got lost or something and has like been living on, on earth for a couple of years. Many of the boys in his paintings, uh, which I will not be sending because I will not be putting this up on YouTube, are naked or loosely clothed. Caravaggio's only known assistant was a boy named Checo, who appears in a number of his works and who may have also been his lover. How old was Checo? Like 13. And Caravaggio was 24. So people are saying lover. Caravaggio. But Mm. um, I don't love that term. Uh, I don't know why I said it. I'm like so scared of getting libeled. (laughs) I'm like, he is dust. (laughs) Like, no, he cannot sue me. The corpse yeah. can't hurt you, Kalen. But the Italians are going to come for you for this one. Come for me. Oh, my God. Could you bring me like a like a nice red sauce when you come to mm, murder me? Yeah. An Italian has to give you a final meal. Yeah. It's part of their religion. Otherwise, they're not Italian. Pastism. Pastism? Pas- Wait, no. I think that was a real thing. Wasn't that a joke? Religion? Pastafarianism? Oh. Oh, yeah, because of the flying spaghetti monster or something. God, that was so cringe. <laughs> I was about to say. Atheists so embarrassing. are so embarrassing. <laughs> I love being part of every group that's super annoying. Like atheist, <laughs> vegan, person who makes being gay their entire personality. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. Oh, also, by the way, like, I, I think I need to say this publicly. I am an atheist. But I made, like, one joke in a video one time at the expense of atheists. And let me tell you, the comments that I continue to get to this day, (laughs) like, everybody calm down. Calm down. I don't believe in Sky Daddy or whatever the hell you want to call him. I just think that... That's so cringe. You know, sometimes... (laughs) so cringe it's so cringe. i just think that the community should maybe think about things before we say them because we're really fucking annoying i do love a little bit of optics on this one <laughs> yep. because we're not a marginalized group and <laughs> i think just like annoying people maybe do need to tone police themselves a little yeah. bit So in 1597, Caravaggio scored a prestigious gig, the commission to adorn the Contrelli Chapel in the Church of San Luigi de Francesi? Francesi. This significant and challenging assignment tasked the 26-year-old painter with crafting three expansive paintings, each illustrating distinct from the life of St. Matthew. So, like, saints were normally painted in a way that made them seem inhuman. Like, almost deities themselves. But I just sent you a a photo. He is made to just look like a dude. Just like a... Yeah. Just a guy. And the paintings are very, like... being guided by angels. Yeah, Yeah. they are. And, like, the the shading is... Like, look at those arms. Like, how am I looking at, like, a 500-year-old painting and being like, Hey, arms... (laughs) (laughs) Especially around the the elbow, actually. Like, the joint. Yeah. Yeah. So well painted. He's very, he's very talented. Like there's a yeah. reason people, and like sometimes I look at old paintings and people are like, it's a work of art. And I'm like, it's a work of shit. Looks bad, <laughs> man. <laughs> like looks bad. Like my five-year-old could draw that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the fruits of Caravaggio's labor emerged in the form of three pieces. St. Matthew, the angel, the calling of St. Matthew and the martyrdom of St. Matthew. And they're all like this kind of vibe. Right. They're completed in 1601 and they're showcased as like, that's his magnum opus at the time. Like, right. He was commissioned to make them. They were a big deal. People were coming to see them. Like, he's doing well. But they stirred up quite a fuss among the church and the general public because it wasn't like a regular saintly 
portrayal and people felt that right. it was like blasphemous like disrespectful back then people saw this mm-hmm. and they're like are you showing a saint's fucking gorgeous little feet like mm. <laughs> for are you free showing his bald head yeah <laughs> like <laughs> no halo yeah. nothing to show him as anything other than just some dude and you like put portraying... that behind a paywall yeah <laughs> i'm adding saint michael's feet to celebfeet.com tonight <laughs> his initial rendition of saint matthew and the angel caused so much distress that's the one i sent you among his patrons that they made him do it again like do a second one no yeah did they make him put and shoes on him no <laughs> it would have been really like <laughs> nice like pair of reeboks <laughs> i think mean, he just panned Actually? up that looks so cute. Okay, they just panned up. They just cropped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he actually took it as like a challenge. Like, okay, yeah, I can do that, whatever. So recreate like, it. Yeah. Yeah. It allowed him to elevate traditional religious imagery and infuse it with his distinctive style. So he was like sort of trying to figure out like his niche, you know? Like he wanted to be like, okay, mm-hmm. what can I do that's still me, but that like people aren't going to like behead me over or whatever. Right. But he. I don't know. I don't think he could do it. Like he kept needing to like push the boundaries. Like his biblical scenes would be because he wasn't being commissioned. He would be like, well, I'll just do whatever I want then. He didn't want to take sponsors. Right. I do so. love the way like it's very Catholic church how he's like pushing boundaries with paintings and they're getting mad about like, you know, him painting some guy's feet, but they're fine with him fucking a 13 year old boy. Yeah, of course. Just- Catholic Church. It's just just Catholic. You no, know, some things change. Just Catholic things. Some things change, <laughs> and some things stay the same. <laughs> so his biblical scenes now teamed with the presence of sex workers, beggars, and thieves that he would encounter on the streets of Rome. That's dope. Yeah, I know. The Contrelli Chapel Commission not only brought some financial relief, but also catapulted him into the limelight, opening up a floodgate of exposure and a bunch of more projects coming in. Mm. His artistic output in the following years encompassed, he was very Christian, like the crucifixion of St. Peter, conversion of St. Paul, deposition of Christ, and the renowned death of the Virgin, which is like, I'm going to send to you right now, and is legitimately fucking dope. They were all so mad about this. He must have had a foot thing, because Mary's little Mary's little toesies are in little this one. Feet. Yeah, they're hanging out. You were not yeah, supposed to be able dope. to like see upskirt <laughs> pregnant <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Almost all of his success was controversial like this. Like, he just couldn't right. fucking stop himself. I love it, though. If he had Twitter, he would have been canceled, like, multiple times. There would have been so many, like, threads. Oh God, that's so great. Screen- with so- screenshots of his tweets and his work. <laughs> of his work. Screenshots of his paintings. <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I made that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, almost all of his success was tumultuous um but like because he was that breeds more success though like yeah (laughs) you know no publicity is bad publicity until the catholic church burns you at the stake or something yeah which like you know it happens but then your paintings are so much more valuable because you can't make anymore yeah but like not to you (laughs) like i feel like people are like oh yeah paintings like your art is worth so much more when you're dead and i'm like but i can't sell it I don't profit, so I don't care. (laughs) So he has a lot of mood swings. Basically, what would happen was he would lock himself away for like two weeks, do a painting, and then come out like pissed and drunk, like looking for a fight. And like be like, okay, time to go like drink and gamble and then harass somebody on the street at like 3 a.m. Frequent brawls, like just like walking up to someone and like punching them in the face or whatever. One of which led to him serving a just a cute, brief little stint in Priz in 1603 after he, like, punched the fuck out of another painter. Whomst among us hasn't had to sleep it off in the drunk tank after punching yeah. another artist in the face. Sometimes it's sort of artists like drama desert content. it. Yeah. yeah. Caravaggio's life was a whirlwind of legal troubles and turbulent relationships from getting nabbed for toting a sword without a permit to facing a lawsuit for beating a man with a stick that he like found on the street. <laughs> he just like picked okay. up a branch and started like whipping. Stuff. That rocks. 
Also, I can't believe they had sword licenses back then. They literally oh, controlled weapons tighter than they do in the U.S. today. <laughs> I don't know if there was like a background check for them, but you definitely, <laughs> you couldn't just like run around with one. Between 2 and 3 a.m. is almost always when these fights happened. So he was drunk. Yeah. Oh, 100%. It's the witching hour. Like, Yeah, it's not his fault. He would go to the pub, he'd get fucked up, and then he'd go try to fuck someone else up. With a stick that he found. With a stick that he found. It's all, like, <laughs> it is all very Italian. Oh, 100%. I'm so Italian for beating men with a stick. <laughs> Truly. Especially on their pretty little feet. <laughs> hmm. It's better not awaken anything in me. <laughs> mm. It's better not awaken anything in me. During this chaotic period, Caravaggio found himself entangled in a stormy rivalry with Giovanni Baglione. Ooh, <laughs> I love all these such names. Such an Italian name. <laughs> I know. He was a fellow painter who once accused him of plotting his assassination, which, like, I believe he would have. Yeah. In 1603, Tracks. Baglione took Caravaggio to court for libel. Amused by the lackluster reception of a Baglione altarpiece, Caravaggio expressed his delight by composing satirical poems about his work and circulating copies in the artist's quarter. That's so extra. I know. <laughs> he wrote he wrote bars about him and then passed them around. Yeah. Yeah. So, to like all his friends. Would you like my bars? Would you <laughs> <laughs> read some of this? Oh, I said something really comfy right here. Oh, he did. Hold on. I have a, a little excerpt for you. In the lens of modern sensibilities, this may seem like just being like mischievous, but not criminal. But like the poems were like news back then. Like that, <laughs> that right. is like that today would be the same as like tweeting out something about someone. Here's yeah. an excerpt. Wipe your, about this is about his poems. Wipe your arse with them or stuff them up the cunt of his wife because he isn't fucking her anymore with his donkey conk. And like number one. Tell me more, Tell me about, more about this about donkey, donkey cock. cock. <laughs> That's so much. It's really aggressive. Yeah, it's so aggressive. And like, I don't know that it's a poem either. Shove it up your <laughs> wife's cunt. Like, oh my God. I think, we, I think we all need to like simmer down a little bit. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> like, and, like, and let's not involve people's wives. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does she do? <laughs> what did she ever do to anyone? <laughs> not surprisingly. Him and his wife were not charmed by these poems, and he was taken to court for libel. I don't even know what part of that is libel. It's like, my cock is actually teeny tiny. <laughs> yeah, this is a lie. You. <laughs> well, they used to like to paint people with, with tiny cocks, so maybe you're onto yeah. something. Maybe that was the libelous part. Like He was like, excuse me, I do not have a massive penis. God gave me a humble peen. <laughs> so he got two weeks in jail for this. <laughs> I wonder if I wonder if Baglione had to like pull out his chode in court to prove his case. Like, oh God. <laughs> See your the, honor. Like, See <laughs> being the stenographer would be so hilarious. <laughs> My knuckles are the balls. <laughs> these these two nuts. <laughs> so he keeps getting in trouble. He faced charges for flinging a plate of artichokes at a waiter who displeased oh, him. That's rude. Yeah. I'm like, come on. You couldn't find some like nobleman to throw artichokes at? Mm -mm. Carrying unauthorized weaponry again and breaking <sighs> a window shutter in his rented room. Like, it's just like, it's some of it's just like petty little crimes. Yeah. This is why they won't give you a sword license. Yeah. You do stuff like this. Like Yeah. Like babe. Like behave you're not yourself. Being discriminated against. Like <laughs> I'm not gonna give you a I'm not gonna give you a sword when you keep beating around at people's stuff you find on the road. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I know what you do with it. <laughs> he also went to prison for hurling stones at a policeman as they <laughs> walked by. Well that's base. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Just like drugs sitting there and they're like, What are you doing? And he's like throwing rocks <laughs> at you, pig. 
that fucking that fucking <laughs> rocks. Uh, then also jail for cursing at an officer and yeah. also for causing offense to a woman and her daughter. I'm sure he said something like really fucking nasty to them as they yeah, were walking Yeah, he was by. like, here, I got this rock. Shove it up your cunt. <laughs> they were like, no, thank you, sir. But like in Italian. <laughs> yeah. By late 1605, his landlady had enough and took all his furniture out because he hadn't paid rent for six months and was like, there, sleep on the floor, you animal. (laughs) And in like a drunken stupor, realizing his life was falling apart, he accidentally wounded himself one night because he fell on his own sword. Oh, you dumb bitch. (laughs) Again. Like, again, another good reason. Okay, this is really it's echoing. It's making sense. <laughs> like, like one of the main reasons people shouldn't have guns is because they don't handle them properly. Yeah. And it's like, uh, clearly it's the same with swords. Yeah. According to one observer, so this is like, this is his, his like routine. After a fortnight's work, he'll swagger about for a month or two with a sword at his side and a servant trailing him, just like fighting anyone he sees. Like, oh he's God. like, okay, I've been cooped up for two weeks. I did the thing. Like, I got my video out. It's now so let's aggro. go get crazy. The culmination of his violent tendencies occurred in 1606 when he attacked Renuccio Tomassoni, a Roman who would these days be referred to on Law and Order as like a pimp. Oh. Um, he killed cute. a pimp. That's also okay. Yeah, I feel like this is fine. Yeah. I'm not... She's not shedding any tears. I don't feel bad for the pimp. Yeah. I also don't feel bad for anyone that died like 500 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) You would have died eventually anyway. (laughs) You'd still be dead now. So like that's not my problem. But yeah, if he was like a madam, maybe, you know, like he just like managed a worker's co-op or whatever. I think I'd be less. I'd be more sympathetic. But yeah, same. I don't care if he kills the boss man. So nobody's like 100% sure why he killed him. Some people say it was about an unpaid debt. Some people are like, oh, he beat him at tennis and he was mad. More recent theories are that he was into his wife and he was not happy. Like Caravaggio was into the guy he killed's wife. Was and the Caravaggio guy... into wives? Uh, I think he was like a bicon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a little bisexual energy for the podcast. I was like, so far, I've only had seen evidence that he was into boys and feet. <laughs> so he loves boys, he loves feet, and he loves v- pregnant virgins. We know all of this for sure. Mm. Immediately after the murder, he peaced the fuck out. He escaped from Rome, went to Naples, Malta, and then Sicily, which, like, as, like, a, a fugitive tour is, like, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Little grand tour of Europe. Like, nowadays, yeah. they sell packages for that on Trivago. Yeah. <laughs> despite being on the run from the consequences of this crime he like he couldn't stop he just kept like painting and then people would be like hey that looks like a caravaggio wait <laughs> like why are you so bad at this like he was painting for other people and like doing it under yeah. other people's names and they were like okay like i can tell that it's you <laughs> Like, this is very clearly yeah. Caravaggio's work. Babe, just like change up your style a little bit. Like, I know. Go through a different period, you know, like Picasso had his fucking blue period or whatever. Be like, this is Caravaggio's, I'm going to use lighting period. Yeah, that like three weeks where he put people's eyes in the right place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. They're like, it looks like a Picasso, but it's clearly not. Look at the <laughs> symmetry on this face. <laughs> During this period, he presented one of his more startling works, Resurrection, where he depicted a Jesus Christ that was far from the conventional saintly image, looking like sort of like disheveled after resurrecting from the tomb. <laughs> like normally like he's like glorious. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> he normally <laughs> looks like like glorious, like I have returned. Yeah. Uh, and this is like, he looks like he just pushed a like 8,000 pound rock out of the way of a cave. <laughs> yeah. I'm, setting, I'm setting it to you right now. Jesus, where are you? I love his little loincloth. <laughs> yeah, I mean like body looking good. Face. Yeah, mm. yeah like it is kind of like me when I emerged out of COVID quarantine. <laughs> the six weeks like, when we were doing that. Like he is supposed to be perfect. Like 
absolute perfection. And he just kind of looks like a dude. Like, he still also doesn't have the, like, I don't even know what they call it. Like, I guess the halo. Um, but, like, the... He's got a little bit of of glow behind. Like, somebody put a light yeah, behind yeah. him. He's got a little hair glow. <laughs> he's backlit. <laughs> yeah, he's backlit. <laughs> but, like, a nat- like, a natural backlight. Not, like, God's yeah. divine grace. Yeah. The portrayal undoubtedly mirrored the turmoil in his life. Because at this point, he was like he's fucked like he is mm-hmm. haggard he's poor he's being chased like he is a fugitive oh, yeah i bet he had really bad eye bags yeah and he was never he wasn't like sleeping all reports say right. he like laid in bed with a dagger at his side every night like that's oh, so please. stressful <laughs> <laughs> also a bad idea if you've already fallen on a sword <laughs> like <laughs> Put it on the end table. Well, he's probably like sleeping on the ground. So maybe he doesn't have a Sleeping with my dagger under my pillow and then like (laughs) slipping my hand under when I'm sleeping. (laughs) Ow. uh, I forgot I put that there. His, the guy that he killed in 1606, not the end of him like just violently assaulting random people because it's kind of his fave. Things that he loves. Feet. Pregnant virgins, little boys, violently assaulting people. This is why he's on the podcast. FYI. We have to stop this man. <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> Good. I forgot July's- what podcast I was on. <laughs> Happy endings. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> In 1608, he assaulted Fra Giovanni Rodomente Roero, a highly esteemed knight in the Order of St. John in Malta. Mm. This altercation led to his arrest and subsequent imprisonment for the assault. But of course, like all messy queers, he escaped from prison like a month later. Nice. It is very Casanova. Again, it's very Italian. Yeah. So the dude he assaulted is like, I don't fucking think so. Like we've had enough of this fucking little creep. So yeah. they start hunt like like actually like hunting him down. Because you also don't like assault a knight. It's like punching a cop and then yeah. trying to run. Like these bitches are yeah. going to track you down. He this is the first the criminal they're going to catch in like the last mm-hmm. year. All of his buddies are on the case. Yeah. So he tracks him down, finds him in Naples and confronts him outside a tavern. And during the fight, like fucks up his face bad, like Ooh. including his eyes. <gasps> so now the paintings get a little like less cute. <laughs> is he like partially blinded? Yeah. And, like, not, I don't know, artists are kind of, like, stuck up. Like, he was probably really mad that his beauty had been taken away from him. Definitely. And, like, obviously, he's now both killed someone, assaulted a lawman, (laughs) and escaped from prison. (laughs) So things aren't looking great. he's a fugitive. Yeah. So he's like, okay, there's only one person that can save me. The Pope. Because the Pope could give him a pardon. So informed that efforts were underway by friends to secure this pardon, he escapes again and heads to Rome, sailing from Naples. Um, But during his journey, he gets stopped in Palo when he goes to, like, get supplies. And they're like, "Mm, we know you. Everybody's looking for you. They sent out, like, I don't know, medieval pigeons or whatever with copies of his face on like a wanted poster Mm. they were like those eyebrows look so familiar (laughs) if you've ever seen one of his paintings you would recognize his eyebrows (laughs) like (laughs) so they detained him but because he's on his way to the pope and they're looking for a pardon they're like okay well we can't just like we have to let the pope decide now like he's going right. there. The Pope's either going to say yes or no. We're not going to like be like, um, actually, I think I know better than the Pope because that gets you very dead very quickly. Mm-hmm. The Pope doesn't like that when you say that because yeah, his job <laughs> is like knowing the best. Um, but when he got t- to the port, Port Ercole, uh, which is where he was his final destination before getting to the Pope, he got super sick and just died, just like. Just oh. died right there before ever being pardoned. Just dropped fucking dead. I don't know when he had, but I'm assuming it was some sort of plague. Mm. Did Everybody they say anything about his symptoms? Then. No. It could have been scurf. Like throwing up. Could have been, oh, would... been syphilis. Wait, no. That would have mm. taken longer. Yeah. Could have been an appendicitis. Yeah. 
He was like 30. So it definitely wasn't just like old age. It was something. Yeah. Yeah. But nobody was like writing down notes about this. Like one of the things that I always find the farther back we go, even if the person is like extensively written about, it's always like, well, we don't know if these are lies made up by their enemies. So like, yeah. take it with a grain of salt regardless. Oh my God. I believe that though. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, if somebody were to like Google me, they would probably find a lot of lies told by my enemies now. <laughs> so in like a 23, 24, when they're talking about the most famous podcasters to ever have lived. They'll mm-hmm. be like, well, this is this is how we think they probably died. <laughs> it's like like I'm not gonna die on camera. Like yeah. if I get sick, like very sick, I'm live streaming that just in case I die so all of my friends can use the footage mm-hmm. and capitalize on it. I'm gonna instead of going to the hospital, I'm gonna I'm gonna die like a cat. I'm just gonna go like curl up under the couch. <laughs> die like a maid. For someone to find me. <laughs> Curl up under a table and die. Yeah. So post his being super dead and in today's, the way people look in, back at him today is like yeah, In today's great woke painter, society, say what you want to say. Molester. <laughs> like like in it Joe is Biden's very. Joe Biden's woke America. <laughs> in Joe Biden's woke America, you can't even like a painter who is like probably a child rapist anymore. Yeah. In 2010, Rome hosted an exhibition commemorating the 400th anniversary of his death, drawing in over 580,000 visitors, which is like insane. Jesus like Christ. 580,000 people went there to see tiny little boy dick. I thought you were going to say 580, and I was like, that's a lot. And then you kept, the word <laughs> 580, kept going. That's insane. <laughs> 580,000 people were like, who wants to see naked little boys? I want to see these little paintings by a rapist. (laughs) I only like art that makes me sick. (laughs) Same. Uh, Anyways, I'm Kaylin Conrad. You can find me on Twitter at Kaylin Conrad. It's still called Twitter, by the way. And my main YouTube channel where I do video essays, drag corpses of hilariously bad movies. And yeah, subscribe now (laughs) and i'm hoots you can find me on twitter you can find me on (laughs) x.com at punished hoots and you can find me on youtube at hoots youtube if you want to suggest someone else for us to cover you can do that on our patreon you get access to our suggestion cemetery where you can submit a name as well as a key to the morgue where we debrief after every episode in our autopsy report minisodes Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, where we now have full episodes that are all video, you can see our gorgeous little faces. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on the bell so you get notified every week when there's a new episode. And if you're on like a podcast app, give us like one of those sweet minimum five stars. If you can find a way to do more, that would be amazing. Okay, bye everyone. Bye. That's a normal thing that we do, right?